start this beautiful day with a lot of technology. <laughs> it's lunch, right? Hello. Good morning. Uh, we are starting a um, virtual audition project, uh, second meeting in Vilnius, and we are starting it with uh, several interesting things. And first, we are starting with some lectures and training uh, concerning auditions. Um, so for everybody who is here, as well as for everybody who is watching us online, uh, now we will have uh, presentations, lectures from free presenters. And afterwards, uh, after all the session of, of three presenters, which we are streaming now, uh, we will um, have a possibility to discuss a bit also with people here in the audience, as well as everybody who are watching us in far sides, at least in Copenhagen and Olo, and maybe even from home <laughs> via YouTube. Uh, so you are welcome then to ask questions either on YouTube chat, either when we will connect through video multipoint. And for now, I give the floor to first presenter, Arnolda, please. Thank you. Hi. Good morning, Labas Ritas from Lithuania to all the countries that is watching us here today and live streaming this presentation. I'm very grateful to be here. My name is Arnolda Noir. I'm an actress and a director, filmmaker. I have my own short film festival here in Lithuania and I'm teaching in the academy, which is I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak uh, for camera acting. I also teach uh, viewpoints as a movement technique in the academy, but right now, today, I will be giving lectures on cinema acting, which is also part of my subjects which I teach in the academy. So uh, welcome everyone, and I hope you can enjoy my uh, lectures, which is gonna be, I'm gonna go and cover how it's gonna go. So I have an hour, and first of all, I'm gonna talk about the technical aspects of uh, virtual audition, the taped audition, which is like uh, how they compare to each other, and what's the differences, and how as opera singers or actors, we can make the best out of it, because everyone in the world is using it now, right? So everyone in America is already taping themselves and doing the these distance virtual auditions everywhere in the world. So why not do this for our students and make advantage of it? Because we cannot travel in one second and get you know, to another country and perform. So, um, so the first part of the theoretical um, lectures and techniques uh, working for the camera, for the opera singer, I know that it's a totally different world for the opera singer, right? If you have never worked with a camera, it can be very, very scary, or even for politicians who go out and speak in front of the camera and they do it for 20 years, it is scary. So that's, let's get it out of the way, it is scary. So for the opera singers, which are coming from different worlds, from theater, it is a very difficult um, approach to just be in front of the camera and do um, the work that you have prepared and be still and uh, focus your energy, your eyes with a, with a camera and tell the story that you already have prepared and trust it. So the camera is catching everything. So the second part of the lecture, I will invite uh, some people to work with as an example. So why? Because it's important to why, why are we here to play together? So it's better to take all these cameras and work together. So we're, I'm very excited for the second part of the lecture. So right now I'm gonna cover um, technical aspects of working with a camera, which is, um, as I mentioned before, there are two ways uh, of self-taping and sending in an audition and also doing this virtual auditioning, which is the academy that is portraying us and helping us to do. And I hope in the future we can do it more for our students. So it is important to remember that we all have these technical aspects of helping us. We have two cameras here that are filming me and we have uh, beautiful lighting and we have all these uh, you know, technicians that are supporting us for an artist. So when you come on the stage, for you as a performer, everyone is working to 
make you look beautiful, to you know, succeed, to sound the best, because it's very important for the people that are watching you and auditioning you to sound really the best, because even when you're singing, there are some points of the, of the aria, for example, that are very subtle or intimate, and then you can, you can go into a closer shot and tell the story more intimately. So it's very important for that, for example. So everything, every single person that is working here today are here to help you to sound the best and look the best and to deliver the performance the best. So trust that when you come here to the stage for the second practice. Also, as I said, the lighting, even when you're doing a self-tape audition or a virtual audition, it's very important because I think my colleagues that are going to speak later are going to tell about um, the way to dress more and the way you do your makeup as a performer. Because for the camera, I'm just going to mention one small thing, that for the camera, it is very important not to overdo things for the makeup and for the clothing, because, and, but also to have it enough. Um, for example, for the makeup, you can have a little bit of strobing because everything that camera sees, it eats. I'm saying it literally, but it does. So, for example, it is eating your energy that you're sending out through the eyes. It is also eating a part of your visual things. So don't uh, overdo the clothing, big clothing. Have your best features um, aligned and proportioned so you are selling your best features. It is selling because you're performing, right? Um, so for the, for the clothing and the makeup, I believe that uh, my colleagues are going to talk about it more. Also, the background, which is very minimal, and we have the piano for the opera singers, and uh, we're going to use the, the background that is very minimal, so we are here focusing on the performer, right? Um, also, slating, which is, comes to, even if you're coming not uh, in a real audition, it should be treated as a real audition. Because when you come here, you have these cameras, and you are a performer, you're focusing on one of them and uh, just have a eye contact straight with the camera and uh, slate. Slating, I don't know if you have um, that kind of terminology, which is introducing yourself to the camera and treating a camera like your best friend. So really, if my best friend is Milda, then I'm saying, you know, I'm imagining Milda standing in front of a camera and I'm saying, you know, hello, <laughs> my name is Arnold Anwar, and I'm a professional actress and director. I studied in New York. Nice to meet you. I'm going to be um, performing for the character of Carmen today. You know, that's all you need. That's all you need. You slate your name. You say some, you represent your best personality, your best enthusiastic self to the camera, and you treat it as a best friend and uh, smile, you know, very open you show yourself, really, because people want to see yourself. Because it's the first contact, right? It's the first contact, and it's even harder because people are not seeing it like eye to eye right now, like you are watching me, and they're watching it through <laughs> like a glass. So you even have to have that more energy and the most enthusiastic self of yourself to show to the camera. So I think that's the best advice that I got in my life, to treat it as a best friend. And really first take a moment to imagine who is your best friend. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your dog you're talking to. Nobody cares. Just have that intimate contact, introducing yourself, which is in the English language slating yourself. So if you come and into an international audition or you have to send an international audition tape, or if you are virtually introducing yourself, then it's very important that they use terminology, slate yourself. Slate yourself means introduce yourself, okay? Um, yes, um, your audition. It should be very, very clear to the camera because uh, the people that are watching you, they have to have this moment before you start performing. They have to know, okay? Uh, in the real auditions you come, sometimes you don't know, you're very lost, okay, when should I start? You just start and you don't think about it. So for the camera also, I'm not talking about technical aspects that everything is great, the Wi-Fi is great, or um, the technical aspect, people are working with you, everything is okay. Besides that, when you come in and you have that moment before performing, 
take your time because it's very important, right? To ground yourself and have focus, make your choices. How are you using the cameras? Maybe there's only one camera. So make a choice. How am I going to use that camera? So right now, today, I have two cameras. And for example, we're going to have some examples at the end of the, uh, at the second part of the lecture. So we're going to use how I do I tell a, a story in a medium shot, which I can use the whole body. And how do I tell a story in another camera, which is used like a closer shot, a close up. As I said before, we can use like a intimate, moments or something that you want to reveal personally about that story or uh, moments that have not been thought out. What, what is bringing the best out of you? Why is Carmen more different uh, in you, right? So the subtle shot that you're using for audition in a, in a close-up, that's your advantage. Treat it that way. Um, so that moment, as I said, when you land and you b moment before, do your acting work, what makes you here, what, what is the story, what's happening before, why are you saying, why are you starting to sing right now and what's happening in the story, and make choices. So I'm using first focus, I have two cameras, I'm using first focus maybe this one, and second focus maybe this one, and I also have options of uh, being in a profile because people want to see profiles sometimes, and I can, I have this freedom which I can check with technical people that are behind cameras, how much do I have, what's my frame, right? I asked the guys that are working behind the cameras today, what's my frame here for this camera, and what's my frame here for this camera? So I know how much I can move and what's my freedom. What's my constraint in this, what's my freedom in this constraint? Let's put it that way. So right now, let's say in this camera, do we have a master or a close up for the stories, for the practices? You don't know yet. <laughs> this one's a close up. So yeah, well, let's keep it in mind. Uh, that's a close up and that's a medium. Uh, okay. Thank you. Also, as I said, when you're entering this audition process, even if it is virtually, enter with your enthusiastic self, enter with certainty and trust the work that you've done because, and take time to land and, have all, and trust the work that you have done for the scene because even if you are not doing it real, like in real people sitting in front of you, you have to treat it that way. Otherwise, it, doesn't, it, do, it won't work. So you ha emphasize for the story, who's that camera for you and who's that camera for you? And maybe why are you singing sometimes out there? What's your second focus, right? Because you can, you, by singing into one camera, it's going to look very amateur, so be a professional. <laughs> That's why we're having these lectures, right? By making choices, what's part of the story that is very intimate and subtle, and uh, portraying that part of the story into a close-up, and also what's part of the story that could be, maybe I'm using more of my body to tell the story, and maybe it is, uh, it is more that I could... I'm very powerful right now in this moment, so I could see the whole thing, right? And uh, when in the in the when in the in the singing in the scene, when do I go and have a in, in maybe a private moment, or maybe I'm singing to everyone, or why is that happening, right? So every time you have to choose, and as a professional, still every singer is an actor, I believe. So as a professional, make a choice. So it's naturally coming from one thing to another. We're going to work on it, so it's going to be more easier. I'm going to ask some questions with the people that volunteer to work with me and the, the second part of the lecture, and uh, you're going to see it more. <laughs> okay. As I said, we, well, in opera uh, and in theater, stillness is very powerful. The same goes with camera. The stillness is very powerful, and the more you trust your work, the more still you are. Of course, it comes down to the character, who you're playing, and everything, and all the story. But still, even for the camera, the more still you are, the more uh, powerful and confident you seem. And, uh, for example, that part of when you're slating yourself, it should be very, very calm and uh, still, right? 
because then you're representing your best self. Also, when you come, doesn't matter. Again, real audition or <laughs> a virtual one or you tape yourself, never apologize because a camera eats everything, every movement, right? So every time you are fidgeting or doing this or uh, apologizing, that's what I call apologizing being in front of a camera, it catches everything like with a magnifying glass. So every time you're doing something extra, that's why I'm talking about stillness, right? Every, every time you're doing something extra, a camera magnifies it. So be conscious of it. And of course, as uh, performers, I think we are very aware of that stillness and that power. So I'm just making a comment on it. I, I believe that you know that. <laughs> okay, so what else? Everybody, I don't know, just I don't know if you, I need to mention these things like everybody should turn off their phones and the, all these technical aspects. Let's go to a more interesting part. <laughs> um, make sure, again, coming back to the frame, make sure you are in a frame because we want to catch the best side of you performing. Make sure you are in the frame. Always communicate with the technical people that are helping you look and sound best. Okay. And always... I don't know if I should talk about the acting part because for the camera, as I mentioned before, to go on, continue talking about it. So be personalize the camera. As I said, when you slate yourself, you personalize it as a best friend, your mom, your dog, whatever. And then for the second part, when you're performing, personalize it, who it is, right? Your lover, as your, who are you communicating with? Or your, I don't know. Who else can be besides the lover <laughs> in the theater? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so as I said, camera, it's your energy and your eyes are energy. And all the acting and singing work that you have done before audition or before performance, when you stand in front of a camera, there is a need that you need to trust it. I don't know what you can do because for the camera, you have to be super relaxed. So whatever you do to prepare from, for your voice, for your body, to help you relax, do that. Because for the camera, oh, we believe, okay, we are so used to the stage, we can do everything on the stage as performance, but just put a camera in front of us and everyone tenses up, as I said, for some weird reason. Some, some things happen and we, we cannot breathe anymore. Or I don't know, or some, okay. <laughs> I don't know, yes, so do whatever you need to do from yoga to breathing work and or talking to your dog. Um, Essentially, okay, camera will catch everything that you do, so be clean in your work. And by that mean, I have clear choices in your scene and choose where you focus. I'm just going through again until we reach the second part where we practice with people. So I'm just making bullet points right now what I talked about. Um, so your eyes are exuding energy all the time and like your body for camera, the eyes are very important. So you could focus and be clear about it, make a choice. For example, if there is an, an intimate moment in the story that you're delivering and your voice goes softer, communicate that with technical people so they catch the sound, so they put a close-up on you, correct? So maybe that part of the story should be portrayed in a close-up and maybe the sound has to be double-checked. So be very precise with your eye focus. Have second focus, which I mean, I don't know, if you have any more questions, you can ask me right now, even in the process, right? So what I mean by second focus, this is your first focus, for example. I'm performing, this is my lover, I'm breaking up with him. Very stupid, right? Example, but <laughs> let's put it that way this morning. Uh, so um, this is the first, the person that I personalize as a camera. I'm looking straight into the camera, I'm performing. And where's my second focus? My second focus can be here, can be anywhere that I can still, for the camera, see part of the story that I'm delivering, but my eyes are not fixated, focused on my first focus, correct? So if you have any more questions about that, you can always ask. Um, and always, just to mention, Always be nice to professional people that are working for your technical aspects, the cameramans, the lighting and everything, as I mentioned before, they make you look the best, they make you sound the best for the virtual audition. Um, so we will give it a try today with a couple of people. We have two cameras, as I mentioned before, that we can work for today as a performers. So 
we will talk about, we will invite one person and we will talk about their story, what's happening in the scene, and uh, we will see where we, we could make the best choices for the story to come out alive in the virtual audition. So everyone gets their best. Because when you audition for someone, on the other end, people are expecting you to finish their job, you know, just be the person that we're looking for. Just be now, because then our job is done and we're happy, we go home, we have dinner. Everyone's happy. So just be that person that they are looking for by all the examples and the advices that I gave you and um, help their job because they, you know, you help them to find what they're looking for. So also, it's never the good that we have so much focus on perf as performers on ourselves when we come to audition because it's just, oh my God, it's my time. I'm gonna have to be my best. I have to do my best. It's uh, so much attention on us. So we forget about the people that we are auditioning for, e especially when it's the when it's the virtual audition because everyone's not real. So extra attention on the people and personalization, who are the cameras for you. We need that extra attention. And never forget that you are delivering something for someone. Maybe it's easier to pick a person that's watching us right now live here, so because we're practicing, right? This is the whole thing that we're practicing for, thanks to Academy. So <laughs> let's give it a try. I would like to invite Monica, thank you, as our volunteer today. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Thank you, Monica. Hello. Uh, Monica is a student, right, here yes. in the academy. Yes. And uh, what year are you studying? Uh, how? Uh, Which year? Uh, it's my last year of baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. And what scene did you prepare today? I will sing uh, Signora Ascolta. It's a new aria from uh, Giacomo Puccini opera, Trandot. Mm -hmm. Okay, first I see that you are a little bit nervous, which is okay, but uh, try not to look in this monitor. I know we're all a little bit narcissos, but it's okay. <laughs> try not to look in this monitor. Mm -hmm. um, just, just, here just here and here, and also I said as a second focus, outer world, right? Um, so I'm just going to ask a little bit about the story, about yes. the scene that you're going to sing. So do you think there is a moment where you can have a, a close-up, just technically. Do you, do you know there a moment that we could switch for technical people, that we can have like a close-up on you, that you're delivering something softer maybe, or intimate, or still, I don't know. Yes, I think I will try and <laughs> do it. Yes, 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 but could you tell us when? Because we have to when? switch the cameras mm. for the frames. I think... Um, Just make a choice, uh, any choice, and we will see if it works, right? We don't know if we... We, okay, we, we can try. I think it will be on the second part when I start singing from the piano a little bit. You will hear that, I think. Yeah, and I will maybe... Second part. Yeah, yeah. It's like... And uh, you will turn to the camera. Yeah, I will okay? turn to the camera, okay? <laughs> and then we switch to the, to the close-up when she turns yes. to the camera, yeah. okay? Yeah. And you will start, you will begin with uh, a... You want to begin with a medium shot or looking out or having a private moment, I think make a choice. Straight? straight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, straight. Uh, when do we use uh, uh, the, whole, the whole master shot for mm, you, I think the whole body? Maybe from beginning. Yes. But are you concentrating on the camera or are you looking out? Maybe to the camera. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. I don't know the story, so let's let's give it a try, so we can find out and see what we can adjust, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, how was it for you? Because you're making choices when you're going, it seems that way. Thank you. It seems that way that when you were performing, I know you. we talked about some choices, but you also made choices while you were singing, right? Yes, I will try to do it a little bit. Maybe you're not like here, here. I know a little bit. Mm -hmm. How to say, quitte lotte. Change. Change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe that's a little bit interesting, like a movie, I don't know. Yes, because like it's part, we, <laughs> we need to practice, because yes. we we wouldn't know, right? Because yes. we, we need to practice, so. I, a nice experience. <laughs> thank you. It's I, I believe it. It was nice to, for us to hear your voice. I feel like, you know, fan of style. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to give you extra things to practice with, which mm -hmm. could be, uh, for example, not only having your first focus, one, two, three, right? Mm -hmm. I can, you, you did this one moment, it was so beautiful, you looked for a little bit, like a short moment down, mm -hmm. and it was so intimate for me. Mm -hmm. Even, so, so don't, don't uh, you know, don't uh, pull out of those choices. Yeah. You can also make those choices as you make in the theater. Mm -hmm. Just uh, be aware that you are your fo first focus, that you can have second focus, and second focus like this could be also like, yes. and just having all this opening to the cameras, but also having very private mm -hmm. moments. Yes? Uh, you use a very, 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 Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You so much. <laughs> okay, do you want to try it again? Or you're, you're good with practicing? What do you think? You can adjust? Because sometimes when we have any audition, they can ask for uh, just say it like, okay, do it differently. And then you think to yourself, how can I do it differently? Just, differently. just changing one small thing, which could be one choice, or technically I choose something else, or uh, mm -hmm. I, choo I choose a different moment before. For a mm -hmm. moment before, I mean like how, mm -hmm. how am I here? What, what made me got here at this point mm -hmm. in the story? So ch just changing a slight thing can mm -hmm. mean I'm doing it differently. But sometimes, you know, people ask, Okay, do it differently. And you think, what do you want from me? <laughs> Just make a different choice. That's what it means. Make a different choice. So, I don't know. Do you want to try again? I sure. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it differently. There are certain parts of the aria you are trying to be uh, brave. You're talking to yourself, yes. and then you're talking to whatever, what a Timur, yes. uh, the father. Try to decide which of the cameras, which yes. one is Timur and which one is Kalaf, and mm -hmm. what is for yourself. You are trying to collect the carriage. I think that's then you don't oh. need to think about left, right, direct. Yes, you, yes. You just choose which one is father and which mm -hmm. one is uh, son, okay. which one is Timur, Kalaf, uh, mm -hmm. the whole word, the whole way you are going to, the, okay. the, the way of death way you, where this way is. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's the point. It, Very good does advice. Does it make yes. any sense? Yes. yes.
Thank you so much. I think your advice was very precise and helped. Thank you. Thank you. I think it made the difference because I can see it in your eyes. It made the second time. Wow. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. How do you feel? Better? Uh, What's the second yes, time? I feel what I just live, what I am low. Yes. yes I get really strong emotional. Yes, yes. Emotional. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Even your body language, everything. You, you felt more free in front of the camera. I can see that. More relaxed, you know, yes. to deliver yourself. <laughs> so thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> okay. Can we have a second volunteer to work with? Thank you. Hello. 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 Okay, can you introduce yourself? What's your name? And Hello, my name studying? is yeah, uh, my name is Agne. I'm studying in first year of master. Uh-huh. And I'm singing Elizabeth Aria from Tannhäuser. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit what's happening in the scene? Um, in this area Elizabeth greeting uh, the hall where the Warburgs singing contest takes place and she's singing about her feelings, how sad she was when Tannhäuser left a human world. <laughs> and um, now she feels happy. Why does she feel happy now? Um, because um, the time has passed. Yes. The time has passed. So uh, who is she talking to? Who is she communicating with? With the whole. With the whole world. Yes. She's happy. It's the blissful moment yes, with the world. Yes, she greet. She's greeting the greeting world. Greeting the whole, yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> interesting choices that you can make, right? With the yes. cameras and opening up and your body, master, close up. Let's think about it for the first time as we did with Monica. So just technically. And then we can see how much you can deliver for the first time uh, Technically, and then we go deeper if we need into the story for the second time. Okay. Clear? Okay. Let's try it. Thank you. Just be aware of uh, making clear choices, right? With the cameras.
thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will. I have some questions, right, for for your performance. Thank you. Um, that uh, sad moment that I called yes. that you turned in the mm -hmm. beginning of the of the performance when you turned into the camera. What was it? What was the? Why is she sad at that moment? Because she sang about. Um, because she think about uh, in this room, I still hear, I still heard his songs. Uh huh. Okay. And she, uh, and at the moment she feels sad. Okay. But but uh, later mm -hmm. she sings, my chest lifts upward and I greet you again. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good because you made a choice with yes. a more intimate story, and I think. Uh, the, for the lighting, we can fix something, right? For the close-up. Um, and uh, we should stay for when you had that beautiful, intimate moment for the ending, right? When you had this, like, <sighs> a relief of uh, having this ending moment. And then here I am. Here I am, the yes. last moment. So keep that. I think it really works because we went from having you very close, mm -hmm. having this inner moment and mm -hmm. then here I am opening so we keep that for the cameras I think uh, any comments from the viewers yes please um, I have a comment about the Elizabeth figure that that even when she's thinking about times that has been difficult uh, she's still in this fantastic mood so don't go in to yourself too mm -hmm. much and mm. go down. I also think that it's dangerous when we are on screen to go down and we, that it's not possible to see the eyes. Yes. Because then it's, uh, it can be very difficult to see what are the thoughts. Yes, yes, yes. And at, uh, at, um, the last thing I want to say is about this using this camera for to be very intimate. Then you go from being the role, the part you are singing, into being a private person. And personally, I don't like that. I think it's wonderful that we have the opportunity to use different uh, camera uh, angles, and that you, then you can see the face and the, the expression in many, many different ways. But w when a young singer wh who's never done the part before do this, go directly into the, the camera. It can be dangerous. I see it, it doesn't function for me, and I see it's, you're getting vulnerable in a way that I don't think is, is good. And it gets too private. I don't know how, how other people. What about you, Soile? Well, first of all, I'm not sure if we in all we have only one camera, you see? Yeah. So. Uh, th that is easier, and if the camera is somehow back behind the hall or on the other side of the hall, um, I agree what Anne says. It's it's totally different to do uh, in front of camera. It's um, more naked, uh, and try to decide in in this suddenly in this moment which one I use. It's it's difficult. Maybe it's good if, if, you're, if you're nervous what you're singing and how the voice is working, you have to concentrate on cameras. Maybe, that's a <laughs> maybe it's, it's even good to have a, your nervosity to, uh, to other things. But um, particularly with this area, uh, this camera changing didn't work because Elisabetta is uh, brave, uh, sort of brave, adelic uh, character. It, it kind of worked with a shy character like Liu. Mm -hmm. but Elizabeth, uh, this is only my opinion. Yes, Dr. Klaus, do you have any more questions? Okay, um, so I think, yes, maybe it depends with the character, but also we audition for 
more, we audition for different kinds of characters, first of all, right? And we audition live with the cameras. It's very, it's very hard. So maybe making a choice, a different choice, because we're practicing here, right? Everyone just making a different choice of delivering it. Here I am. I am brave, and I'm happy to the whole world. And not thinking about technical parts. You know, where do I put my attention? Maybe that would make a difference. Maybe that would make a difference in your performance. So maybe we can try one more time okay. like that. Yes. I I think it's it's wonderful that we have this opportunity today to, practice, yes. to see it because sometimes you never. You, maybe you can think and imagine, yeah. if you're not used to this, you can imagine this would be good, or this and this and this. And seeing it now, I mean, many of us can be very sure of some t choices, and we wouldn't be else. So it's, yes. it's wonderful to have this opportunity, so thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. So yeah, let's try it, let's try it dr differently, opening up, right? Yes.
<laughs> okay. How did you feel the second time? I don't know. <laughs> it's strange. <laughs> because more practice. I need more practice. And yes. I think it's this camera, this camera. And, but, you know, better. Better. <laughs> I think so, because you were not putting yes. your attention on all the technical yes. parts and you were giving yourself more time to deliver yes. your performance, really. Mm -hmm. Because when you're when we are putting that mm -hmm. attention, mm -hmm. then it's we're so much in our heads we forget what's happening with the performance. Mm. I think it was so much better if just opening like that. Um, anyone can comment, right, or questions? Please to comment. I I, I liked it much better now. Really, uh, I would say to you, it, it, you're very brave to come up here and. And all of us are thinking and saying things about yeah. things uh, you are doing. And it's not to you as a person, <laughs> you know, I hope that yes. you know that. <laughs> but it's very brave to do that. Um, I would say that you could gain so much by having the same feeling that you have inside when you do the more vulnerable things and when you close down, because you close down to your to your audience and so to have the same feel feeling and have open eyes then you send the feeling that you have to us mm -hmm. and then we can feel it mm -hmm. unless it, it's only your, you yourself who is feeling it so try maybe to uh, make some exercises with yourself in that way and I felt that you were much more there now, much more yourself and, and uh, that I really liked. But I think that you can get something from, from that, what I'm talking about, your eyes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. else who wants to say something? I agree with Anne Margaret. Uh, you both are very brave and it's n when we're, what we're saying is not criticizing your your voice or your personality. It's just that we're trying to get the system right. Yes. Um, I agree also what she said. The eyes are the mirror we are seeing what you're thinking. So show your eyes as much as you can. Uh, just a simple uh, tip. Get your head mm -hmm. up. <laughs> More or less up all the time. Uh, there are some moments when you can be shy and you can ha have a look at, at the sea, um, um, floor. A technical question. Yes. I think it's awful difficult not to look at the screen in front of you. Does it have to be there? Because it's, <laughs> it, it's difficult when you're yes. performing and you see yourself there. It's distracting. Your third eye is on the screen all the time. <laughs> Sorry. Good question. It, it wasn't also <laughs> not a critic. Just a question. That's, that's a good idea. Usually there are monitors where you can see yourself or at least something which is uh -huh. on there. But uh, maybe for this kind of situation not to have this distraction, we could actually just switch it off. <laughs> yeah. yes, or how true. do you think? <laughs> yes, true, true. Because I think we're not learning anything in the moment while we're performing, so why why have it on? So after. It's the same thing that you do in front of the camera is giving advice. Yes. At the same time you're singing, you can't take it. You just do, and then the critics or the yes, screen it's off. It's distracting One unless vote. unless we would be recording and rewatching after. But we're having a live uh, comments and live things, so it's yes, it is distracting. Well, the we did it with a screen on. We are amazing. <laughs> you are amazing. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, so, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, very, very good comments. And I think that what we also learned, not for every character, we can use um, the cameras, right? We can have the pro private moments not really down. We can have them as a second focus, private moment maybe a little bit lower. Just all the technical aspects with working for the camera with the auditioning, they are okay and they are good to know, right? 
And who knows, maybe opera world will go uh, into the cinema again and again. <laughs> we hope that <laughs> we need more films with operas. <laughs> um, so thank you for today. And thank you for your questions and commentaries. I think it was a very, very good practice um, for everyone. And thank you for the volunteers. You're so brave. Thank you so much. You have made my job so much easier and more fun. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arnolda. So now we have a 15 minutes break, and then we will continue on with with presentation of our colleagues from Denmark and Finland. That's it. Maybe they want some questions. Yes. I, oh, I didn't ask about the questions. Oh, actually, uh, you, if you will stay here for, or, or you have to go away now. Uh, I have to go at before 12. Ah, okay. What time is it? Uh, it's, it's, it's. I can yeah. stay for 15 minutes. Uh, do we have if any we have questions? Any actually, yes, for Arnolda now, uh, from what she was uh, telling. Uh, we are actually now not ready to to connect so quick with with far sides because it was planned at the very yeah, end. Yeah, maybe they would have questions. <laughs> maybe they would have questions. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> uh, do we, uh, Vitanis? Do we have sound from Copenhagen, in example? Uh, oh, hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi. <laughs> do we have questions there for Arnolda? <laughs> No? <laughs> no. <laughs> it okay. is a very basic introduction, really, with camera work. It's so, so basic, but we practice. That's the reason, right? We, we are doing this virtual auditioning. So maybe when the information sets in and you can practice with your colleagues in different countries and uh, send me notes, I can share my contacts. And it would be really interesting for me also to know how it works for you as opera singers, because it's the first time I'm doing a workshop <laughs> of virtual auditioning for opera singers, too, you know. So yeah, thank well, you. <laughs> perfect. We will continue in May, so maybe we can keep in touch yes. and keep you involved. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thanks very much again. Thank and you. a short break then. <laughs>
Pauze, maar zo. So, good uh, morning, still. <laughs> And after a short break, we are continuing. Uh, we are now also connected via video conferencing, so we can later have a little discussion with sites in Copenhagen and Oulu. And now I give floor to or their experienced teachers of this project, Anna Margareta and Soile, to continue. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, thank you so much. My name is Anna Margarete Dahl. I am uh, the head of the Opera Academy at the Royal Theatre the Royal Danish Academy of Music. Uh, this academy is under, the, under an umbrella, which is both the theater and the academies of music. Um, I have had a long career myself uh, until two years ago when I went on my pension. Uh, for many years, I traveled a lot, and I did a lot of auditions. Um, and I had a career mostly in Europe. Um, after some years, uh, I was lucky to get, uh, to be a member of the soloist ensemble in the opera at the Royal Theatre. And there I was doing a lot of uh, parts, a lot of roles like Tosca, uh, Elsa in Lohengrin, and Yeah, I started actually as the Knight of the Queen. So I've been through a, quite a journey, I must say. To Mozart, to Wagner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. can, can yeah. I ask, can you take out that little box of mini, mini, that little box? This one? Yes. And there should be... You don't be have any batteries on. No, <laughs> it, 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 there is a button to be pressed, I think. That's oh, weak. you have to start again. Mm? Wow. Let you me have see. To, you have to do it. Yes. She has to start again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Or, no, wait, it's here. Yes. Now it's on. <laughs> Now it's on. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now they're here. Are we on now? <laughs> okay. So, so I don't have to I don't have to say all the things again or what? No, we can just continue, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, and you have heard it all. Hello Copenhagen, hello students. Hello. <laughs> hello. Um yeah, but my experience uh, for auditions is really from a uh, singer's view, but also in the way that we actually work with people in, uh, in our academy in Copenhagen. What is very visible for me when I see, when I also uh, am in a, a ju jury, is that less is more. And how can that be? That can be only by how the preparation is. And I must say, preparation is almost everything when we talk about audition and, and being on stage and so on. We have to use a lot of work before we enter the room or we enter the studio. Talking about audition, talking about it if it is a, it's a, on screen or it's a normal audition, we have to choose the right repertoire. Many agents are very, very narrow about their, f their knowledge, uh, and some are not that experienced yet about the Fach. So we have to be very sure that we present ourselves in the right Fach. Talk this through with your teacher. And be sure that you know the aria that you're singing very, very well. Also be sure that if your vocal teachers, I mean some vocal teachers, they are fantastic in building up voices and fantastic in talking about the technique, but maybe they don't have so much experience about repertoire. Maybe they don't have had any um, real career as a 
as a singer. So please go to a coach then that really he or she must have really knowledge about repertoire to help you and go on searching for the right things to do. Because staying or going to an audition is about selling yourself uh, the best way. You also have to sing something that is really convincing. And you have to feel that it's nice to start with this aria you're going to sing. Sometimes we only get one chance. It's not always that we are invited to sing a second aria. So don't go on stage and say, oh, I sing this, and then they will probably ask me to sing this and this. Present yourself with the best choice for you. You also have to consider that it's not always very uh, impressive um, to, to hear a person singing something that is really difficult and just managing it. You have to be convincing also in that. When you're going to an audition, sometimes they are searching for a specific part, for a specific kind of voice. Be sure that you have got that knowledge from your agent or from the opera house or for the person that has put you into this audition. That's very important because then you can prepare the, the aria or the, the arias or maybe a lot of the part that they really want to hear. And you can be asked to sing other parts from that uh, part as well. So it's really good to know. And it's a very, very good signal to send that you are really upfront in your preparation about that. Very, very good. Um, it's also a good thing if it's possible for you to sing something that you have worked with um, in a dramatical way. Uh, when we have worked with a director and been through some choices about how to act, how to feel, how to do this or this and this, then you have a totally different approach with your aria. And you can come with uh, some choices uh, that are really <clears throat> deep felt and not uh, just at the surface. And when we are talking about less is more, I think it's, it's very important that we, we, during this preparation, that we find this laser into what we want to choose. And that's much easier when we have done a part. So if you are going to an audition, I will advise you to get in contact with a good director and do the, the aria, um, stage it. And afterwards you will find out, okay, it's much easier. You have so many good thoughts that comes into, into your mind while you are singing it. And then you don't have to do this, but you can be there and be strong in your your mind and you can also see when we started here it was so important when the thought was the right thought was there it really comes into the screen it's so visible and that is really something that they are looking for you have to prepare so you know every sentence and you know everything about the sentence you are singing and then you know the language, the music, the tempo, the rhythm, the dynamics. And not just, oh, I've heard it on YouTube and then now, now I'm singing it. Prepare, really prepare. And that takes time. Also, know exactly what is going on in the piano. I mean, in the piano, it's, it's just the piano. But when we sing it with an orchestra, this place is 
this solo is may maybe done by an oboe. And the oboe has a certain kind of sound, a certain kind of feeling. And when you know that, so even when you hear the, the, the piano playing, you can bring that with you. And that's so important because that is actually um, a co-singer uh, with you. You are not alone. You are there with the pianist. You are there with the composer and what the composer has written and given into this piece of music. And that understanding is also something that you bring to people that are very experienced in listening to you. And many people are in this business. Some are not, I'm sorry, but many people are. Know the opera, the opera very, very well. Know where this, uh, this aria, where it is exactly in, in, in this play, and know the libretto. Know all the other parts that are in, all the other roles that are in the opera. Very important. Also know when is, is it written. Find out. We have, uh, we have a wonderful teacher at uh, our academy uh, who is uh, teaching in opera history and she finds, she finds pictures and things like that. So you get new, um, you get new thoughts and new pictures inside yourself also by listening or by, by looking at that. So you get new, um, so you get some, your fantasy is uh, nourished from that. All this is something that you can go do at home and extremely important and maybe the most important thing. When you go there, know that not all will love you. That's how it is. I mean, Pavarotti said, when I'm singing for 3,000 people, I know there will be two or three persons, he was lucky, two or three persons that will hate him. And that's how it is. This is also something about taste. This is also something about culture. And the way that we work in Copenhagen is different from how you work in Vilnius or Oulu or how they work in Milano. So also when we get in touch with the, with the agencies and the opera houses, we have to know this is also taste. Of course, at a certain level, we have to be professional. We have to know something about our technique and so on. That's not something that we can discuss. But the sound of the quality and so on, the many, many things and how we approach in many ways, that could also be a kind of taste. And that is also something that you have to think about when maybe you felt, I'm not getting work from this. I always say to my students uh, that it's a good idea to visual visualize what you're going through. Do that from the part when you are, maybe you are lucky, this studio or this hall is nearby and you know it and so on, then it's easy to do it. But try to prepare yourself from actually going by flight. Oh, the flight is delayed. <laughs> we tried that yesterday, Mariana. Uh, but it's delayed. Well, it's okay because I have time and so on. And you go to a hotel and, and, and how will the preparation the next morning be? And how will it be to, to come to the opera house or to the studio? How will the hall be? How is the, how is the acoustic? So you are not surprised. This is a way to brainwash yourself in a very positive way. So you're prepared of almost everything. You can also think about where will the jury sit? How will they look? And think to yourself that maybe when they look down and write something, maybe it's not a negative thing. Maybe it could be a very positive thing as well. If you're going to meet, meet uh, maybe one agent, 
I think it's a good, I th a good thing to investigate who is this agent, where does this agent come from, uh, what kind of singers do they have. And it's not that you have to start a, a big uh, um, talk with the agent about that, but it's good to know something about that. Then you also can see a little bit about the taste that this agency has. Talking about the, the journey, when you, uh, when it, maybe it sounds strange, but I've seen many things in my life, be sure that you have got the correct date and time and place that you got right info. Really check that up many times. I've really seen people in many very distressed uh, situations. And this is also a way to, to avoid stress. Find out, is it best for me to go by train, by boat, by car or flight? Sometimes uh, an expensive flight ticket could be better for you because you avoid stress and maybe it's, you don't use so much time for that. Sometimes a flight can be stressful, um, also for, for your throat and so on, for singers, if it's a long flight. And then you maybe have to come a couple of days earlier and, and use the money for that. I mean, that is better to go on stage and do a good job than having be very sore after a flight. So also think about things like that. Um, and as I said before, maybe you should come a day before, so you have a good night's sleep at a hotel, no stress, eat your breakfast and so on at the hotel. If you need some special food, bring it with you. And if you need to buy something, go on um, uh, the internet and find out where to buy it before you leave at home. But I have to say to you, are you going, for instance, at, to Australia? Um, don't bring food or things like that into that country. We, you're really going overseas. It's, it can be very expensive because you're breaking the law. Be sure that you're not too hungry or too full up when you start singing. Um, so you have the right balance in your body. And also be sure that you really had a lot to drink, a lot of water. I think, especially when we are talking about this screening, uh, this um, audition on screen, I think it's not a good idea to bring your bottle with you. It looks a little bit difficult. and So I, t I have a sip now. It's not chic, no. <laughs> and I must also say that what the opera houses are looking for and the agencies are looking for is to have robust singers that are able to sing two arias without not having a lot of <gasps> things and, and drinking and so on. So don't do that. The next, next thing I will talk about is to warm up. That's also the preparation. Uh, really be sure that you have warmed up the voice properly. Use the hotel room or the bathroom. I mean, it's better to get a very unkind remark from the hotel staff or hotel guests um, than doing a bad audition. Uh, you will probably not see the hotel guests and the staff anymore. But it's important that we sing well. You can also use a broom closet if needed. Everything is, but you have to warm up the voice. At, be at the address of the audition in, in, in time, so you, so you don't have to go out in the cold weather after warming up. So you just warm up a little bit again when you arrive there. Uh, and I must say, sometimes they don't have a room where, when you, where you can warm up. It sounds strange, but there are places like this. So um, be sure that you have done it before or use the toilet, whatever, but warm up. 
when we are talking about what to wear, I mean, this is also you. It's not just the voice that they are looking for. They are also looking for a special kind of type. And um, the last 20, 30 years has, has, has really been about typecasting. So what you choose to wear is important. Um, I will say for both sex about the clothes, less is more. Not that you don't have to be, you don't have to be naked, of course. <laughs> but to have too much pattern, too many things and scarves and so on, and um, that really disturbs what you want to, to bring to them. They, they want this inner part of you. And with having too much uh, disturbness, then it's difficult to get that. So I think to, to think classic uh, in, in what to wear, and, and maybe, a little, um, maybe a little dull, you can say, is actually good. Talking about uh, doing something, I've done a little research because I have a sister who is uh, head of the uh, costume and, um, and so on at the, the Danish television. So I had an interview with her. So I have it from, the, from people who know something about this. When you have a black background and that you have many, many times, for instance, when you have the piano, take care that you're not just so totally in black because sometimes it would just be a singing face or a singing neck with a, with, a, with a face. And if it's a white background, don't wear any very light uh, clothes. So you have to go into a, in a small investigation about that. Bring maybe an extra um, jacket or something like that so you can put that on if you see that there will be some problem. Again, you want them to see the whole part of you. Um, don't, uh, and, the, and again, don't use too much drama in your clothes. If you uh, have drama in you and you have a very dramatic voice, let it out there. For the men, I'll say that uh, a shirt is better than shirt and jacket. A jacket that doesn't fit is it's not very nice to look at. Um, you can also roll up the sleeves instead of having something that doesn't fit. All these kind of things is actually, we can laugh about it, but actually it's a way that um, the audience, the jury, when they look at you, they see if something is in balance or not and to help them find the balance and see the balance in you and maybe use um, the concentration, concentration on you instead of sitting there and, and talking about or thinking about, oh, this is really looking strange and so on. Go into it and be professional. So this is not just rubbish. Um, so a light blue shirt is very good for, for most men. I must say. Turtleneck is also very good for the men. Jeans as well. Don't wear a tie if you don't know how to tie a tie. For the women, if you have a short neck, you can make it longer by having a V-neck like, like this. Find a good friend. I mean a good friend that is honest with you and who wants to support you. Um, also talking about how this should be. Is it this way? Is it, that can be very beautiful for somebody. Uh, something that's up here can be very beautiful for somebody. Sometimes when you are, if you have a big bust, it, it's not always good to have something up here. You have to have little down here. Um, 
let the fabrics you wear follow your body. Um, again, something classical. Don't wear shiny fabrics. It can really look very strange on, on screen. And also, if you have, for the bust also, if that is get is too shiny, you only see that. Uh, naked bare arms is not good. It can really look as if you have two bright sausages hanging down there. Um, about shoes, um, be careful with the high heels. Um, I mean, we also want to have our support as singers uh, in a good way. And we also want to show them that we walk in a natural way. <laughs> That's also important. Don't wear big earrings that are dingling or swinging or like that. That's can, that can be disturb, disturbing, at least in when you have close-up uh, on screen. Wear a small pearl or a stone. If you have to wear glasses, it's perfectly okay, <laughs> but don't wear glasses, earrings, necklace, and bracelet too many things at a time. About hair, um, don't, it, it can be, I mean, you are young, most of you, so it can be okay, just let it hang, but actually on screen and on stage, it looks very, very nice if you have a, a kind of hairstyle. Uh, uh, don't arrange anything very weird, but, but very, Something that gets your hair away from the face so they see your mimics and, and so on. And if you have to use uh, hair accessories, choose something that is discreet. Um, Arnolda mentioned a little bit about makeup. Uh, I totally agree what what she said. Um, it's also here something about not putting on too much and not too shiny. And then again, it's, then it on screen takes out the pro pro uh, proportions of the face. So don't do that. Don't use too much around this, the, the, the eyes. Eyelashes you have to take care of with because, and I know eyelashes are very modern at the pop and popular at the moment, but if you, go into a studio and they have a certain kind of light and then it can give you a kind of shadow that you don't want. If you have very narrow lips, small lips, and you wear a dark lipstick, then they get even darker. So take care of what kind of, of color you choose. And be very careful again with shiny lip gloss. Um, Self-perception is sometimes difficult, so again, get the opinion from other people and let them be honest. Now I'm talking about um, the pianist, the accompanateur. It's not always that we have the possibility to bring our own pianist with us. It's wonderful if we can, because then we know what to do and so on. But many, many times we have to go to an audition and we don't know the, the pianist at all. And sometimes we even don't get the opportunity to work with the pianist or have a, a rehearsal with, the, with the, the pianist before we go on stage. So, you have to be very clear in your wishes. And about that is be sure that the score that you bring or the copies that you bring really are in order, that they are taped very well. It's, it's possible to see exactly where the cuts are if you're doing some cuts there. And so when you approach the pianist, you go and fold it out and say, here's a cut, here's a cut, nothing more. To be clear about what you want, what the tempo is and so on, that is something about how you approach the audition yourself with how you want the tempo. 
that is to be a soloist. So don't be, don't be angry at the pianist or angry at yourself if you get a pianist that gives you a special kind of tempo that you say to yourself, this has nothing to do about this piece I'm going to sing. Why on earth didn't he or she know that? But as when they have started and you go on, go and bring the pianist in the tempo that you want. And I tell you, by doing that, you are also showing a very good activity and, and you are showing a... Uh, auth uh, to be an authorized person in, in your professional life and that you are doing to the jury. So it's like, okay, this person knows how to do it. And also a, a conductor will love to see that. After ending the audition, remember to thank your pianist even if he or she plays poorly, badly or shitty. Maybe it's a future colleague in this house you are going into. You never know. So you, and I hope, I hope it will be. So, so better be friendly to that person. I will say that before you go into the room where you're going to audition, don't talk too much to your colleagues or to the other participants. Um, try to stay in focus. I mean, nobody would say that you are rude if you do that. Uh, but it's important that you are in a focus and you know what you're going into. So it's not about being a friendly, kind um, person. person. You have to be professional before going in. Um, so you know exactly what to do when you go in. Afterwards, then you can have a chat and then it's good to say good luck to the other persons. When you go on stage or you go into the studio, uh, be natural. And that's something so difficult. But um, going on stage in a good tempo, no, not too fast or too slow, and be aware of yourself of your front and be, be aware of yourself on the back. So you have the feeling that whole part of you is aware of where you are and not just going into some nervous um, thing that is outside of you. Try to be inside yourself and practice this at home. Don't be shy with yourself in that and maybe also get help from each other to do things like that. Look out at the audience, a small, like this, and then you go immediately to your pianist, give the, the score to the pianist. Shake the hands, for, for instance, and say what you want to say, as I told you before. Turn out to the jury and say your name loud and clearly and what you want to sing. Um, by doing that, you are actually having a feeling, how is the acoustic here? How do I feel here? It's also a way to focus. It's also a way to be sure that now I'm here, I can hear my voice. It's actually there. It's all, it, was all, it will also be there when I start to, think, to sing. So it's very important for your self-confidence. You also show ability of communication. This way that you talk, you, you also show the way that, how the quality of your voice is, so they can hear, is the quality of the voice the same when you talk as when you sing? Or is the quality of the voice when you speak very good and then the voice is not good when you start to sing or otherwise? There's a lot of communication in that. They also get a feeling of your personality. So it's just not the part yeah, that you're singing or the aria you're singing, but how is the personality when you go on stage? Do you have this kind of self-confidence? Not 
here I come, I will like to sing this. And this. But I go into this, I, I trust myself and I trust that what you hear will be okay. That's good. Use a couple of seconds before you start singing. Just again, to show that you go into that. That's also perfectly okay. But it's not perfectly okay if it's half, an, half a minute. While you are singing, then this preparation I talked about in the beginning, there it comes. And also the preparation about how, if you have visualized this moment, because then you will be able to, to stay in that focus and not being out in, oh, what are they thinking about me? Because this, oh, what are they thinking about me? Is actually throwing yourself out of what is, should be the right thing and what should be in focus. And I mean, things happen. As we say, shit happens. But the way that you actually, um, how you actually cope with that, that also gives people an impression of what, what kind of person is this? Are you able to, from doing a mistake, and I mean, can, you can do a mistake with things that you have done a lot. But how you do it, how you cope with it, that is important. And at least it's so important for yourself that you don't get stuck in something very negative. So when that, if something has happened, go on. Go on in your thoughts. Stay in what you are wanting to communicate and in the maybe technical issues or what you are doing with your sound or what you want to make in, in the part you are singing. Sing with your eye opened, I've written here. On a screen, everything will be visible. Have maybe two or three fixed points, but not too much like this, like this. But this, maybe this, maybe this. But stay in a focused way. Maybe the jury will stop you after one aria or already in the middle of an aria. This doesn't mean that you, that you, was, you were awful. It can also mean that they are in a hurry and that they've always, already heard, heard that this is a good voice and we like what you hear, let's go on. And then you, maybe you were invited to come later and so on. Of course, it can also mean they're not interested. And after, uh, about feedback and so on, don't, don't, think or, or don't think that they will come running after you and tell you how they felt about anything. They don't do. So uh, the most important thing is actually that we feel ourselves that we prepared as good as we could and that we did a good job. Um, and if, you, if you're sent out of your own agency, of course, then you can, of course, you can ask some, some feedback. And don't stalk the agencies. And how did you feel this and how did you feel that? If they feel that you are really annoying and ugh, irritating, then they are not interested in working with you. After you have been singing, keep the moral and keep the smile up until you, have, until you have gone out of the room. Then you can cry or <laughs> laugh or whatever, but not on stage and not doing things like this. <sighs> go out, be professional, the show must go on. Then it, you can go out. It can be a very, very, very lonely feeling afterwards. I mean, sometimes you don't know anybody at the, at the place there. It can be so lonely. 
spoil yourself afterwards. Okay, I've used a lot of time. <laughs> um, I have written here, things to do afterward and some good thinking. Of course, it's about getting a job. And I will say, sometimes you have to do 10 auditions before having one job. There's a lot of good people out there. So it's a big competition. For my own sake, I must say, I've had the most luck when I was not interested in a job. I was not a perfect one going on audition. I, find it, I found it very, very difficult. And I have, um, uh, I have a great respect for this. And I also have a great respect for people being nervous about this. But it was, for my sake, it was, <laughs> okay, I got this job. I was really not interested in going to Madrid at that time or something. And then I got it. And maybe it was just that I was a little more relaxed, a little bit more myself in that. Even if the audition didn't go as you wanted, stay focused in your work. Don't fall down. Have a talk with, your, um, with the people that give you advice in your daily life, your, your coaches, your voice teacher, and so on. And ask yourself, was I prepared enough? Had I, did I do everything uh, in the best way? And, and, um, and I must say also, the preparation is really good to get rid of all this, uh, all this nervousness. You can also sometimes ask yourself, do I have the right advices? If you get some comments about something, ask yourself about that. It's your life. It's not the advisor's life. It's your life. A very good thing is to write a letter to yourself about your experience. It's a healthy process and you will be surprised to read the letter after a while. This can give important information to yourself, both about the negative and the positive ways. This was what I, I had to say to you. Thank you for listening. Soile? Uh, <laughs> now it's your turn. Now it's my turn. Yeah. Um, thank you, Anna Margaret, uh, for the lecture. Hello, everybody. My name is Soile Isokoski. I was an active classical singer traveling all around. Um, Far East, Middle East, US, mostly Europe, uh, about 26 years, uh, singing opera, concerts, recitals. And now I'm teaching in Oulu. Uh, the official name is Oulu University of Applied Sciences, School of Music and Preparing, uh, Performing Arts. And I'm also a, a visiting professor in Sibelius Academy, Helsinki. Since 2014, I have been a uh, singing teacher, and I love it. Um, <clears throat> um, I didn't do too many auditions, uh, maybe partly because I took part of my first um, competition in Finland. I was quite old, over 30 years old. And um, after that, I made a couple of auditions, but um, <clears throat> mostly um, I was singing somewhere and somebody heard me and I got the next concert or opera role. Um, now I am repeating many things, many, many same things that Anne Margrethe and also Arnolda 
said before. Uh, but I think it's always good to emphasize they are very important things. Um, also, when you're preparing the, I'm saying the same thing, Anne, and I'm not repeating this all the time, you have to choose right arias and songs for the audition. Uh, the more background you know, uh, the more, the better you will be. You have to know the story of the opera. Uh, if you know also uh, the background of composer and the time the epoch, when it was composed, what was the story, um, uh, who was the librettist, uh, who was the, uh, whose poems were there in the songs, um, uh, the more you know, it's like a, a, a top of iceberg. You, uh, the, the knowledge you have down helps you to get to sing this one aria best you can. Um, the, um, the aria has to match with your voice. Um, it, there could be some passion, passionate uh, singers who want love, for example, singing. Wagner or love to sing Mozart and the voice is not meant to do this repertoire. So I will repeat, uh, um, talk to your to teachers and listen what they say and coaches are very important uh, persons. <clears throat> they know if your voice is suitable for this or that style. Uh, first of all, the voice, the quality of voice, but also it's, it, it's a question of a style. Um, uh, if you can be find a kind of similarity or any real context for, with the character of the opera, that will also help. You have to use your imagination. You don't need to be a criminal to sing as a criminal person. You don't want to be a prostitute to sing a prostitute, or you have to, you could have a happy ha family life to sing feelings of uh, lust or the whole family and other relations. But feelings, what you feel, they are, through the decades, they are the same. Um, no 100% the aria you're singing. Um, sometimes um, it's even good to take a risk. It happened to me, I was at the end of the 90s uh, singing audition for Sir George Salty in Salzburg Festival. And I sang Contessa Rovesono first. I, I prepared Rovesono and I thought that will be the only one they want to hear. So then I came like, um, we got uh, advice. I came um, uh, the day before. And my agent heard they were looking for first lady to magic flute. So um, I got the, st uh, the score and I learned it the evening before I had the audition. Uh, so I sang my Contessa Dove Sono, and then I used your music and I sang first ensemble from the, the, the three ladies. And I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes risk, or risk is, is good to take. Uh, it's good to feel excited try to separate these things, to be nervous and to be excited. Excited is like you're keen to do, and you, you're bringing your uh, energy for the, for the moment you're singing. We can't aid to be nervous, that's always there. But if you, the more you are excited, the more you can forget the nervousity. And um, save your energy, your energy for that moment you're singing. Um, 
talking to myself before performance or before audition, I felt so energetic. I could do, I go shopping or I clean my back or my clean my, um, I don't know, whatever, clothes or suitcase or I replace ever, something. Don't. Save your energy and uh, think that the most important thing you are here is to sing this audition. Sleep well. I would say a week before you are going to, to audition. Uh, before, if you, if you have, I sleep, if you are sleepless one night before, the night before you're singing, that doesn't matter. Don't be nervous about that. But if you are sleepless two nights, then it costs uh, the voice. So, um, And the audition itself. Now, um, like we talked um, when Ar Arnolda uh, told us about cameras, um, it changed a little bit, ankle and focus. You have to be aware if there are two cameras, what you're saying, the right camera, or what you're saying, the left camera. I was used to sing just for the jury who was sitting in the back row. And um, I would say, in spite of the cameras, excuse me, <laughs> you have great two cameras. The main thing is that you, you just, when you are in the room, you just focus to do s the whole hall, the whole space. If you want to underline something, you can turn right or left, but you have to decide when to do that. Um, be yourself. You, you have to find your self-confidence. Um, uh, you have to try that at home or, or in your institute where you're singing certain routines or exercises, how you can find the, your, your best of yourself. But if you come to the room where the jury is, you have to be self-confidence self already from the door, not just when you're standing um, by the grand piano. It's uh, like we heard earlier, it's, oh, you are introducing whole of you, also how you are walking. High heels are nice, but if you can't walk with them, you just choose the convenient old shoes that you can move yourself gently and, uh, and you can introduce yourself. Um, be certain. It's the same thing what you said, but in other, be certain what, you, what you're singing and why you're singing. Of course, it's not a question of life and death, but in, in a way, it is. It's like, um, it's like my younger brother says, if you're singing, are you thinking that it could be your last time? No. But it could be a nice thought, but if you're singing for the jury and you're nervous and you just, uh, they are absorbed, they are um, looking you and, and they are like, uh, Maybe you think they are criticizing you, and then you think, um, maybe this is the last thing I can do. I do it the best way I can. It could make you relax. I mean, you find the, your ways to, to relax, to, to find uh, uh, the best insight from you, and then it comes out. Um, show your eyes. Um, if you have glasses, if you can use contact lenses, do that. If don't, just come in and you take the glasses off and they see your eyes. And the best thing from this is you can't see them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, concentrate the music. Music is always a, 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 an old friend Listen, you have to know what is happening in the area. Uh, if there is a mood change with the, the, the Zwischenspiel when the piano is playing, 
or, or like she said, the ob hobo or a violin is playing. Use the music, use your imagination, what is happening. Maybe the whole set will change behind you in the opera and let it show out from your eyes that you have another thoughts. Um, if you could be in a role, if you can play the role, um, it could help also. You can um, uh, cross your frames or limits or your shyness being somebody else. It, it doesn't have to go as far as it costs uh, your voice, but the gestures and how you, how you look uh, the audience, how you look the other people, uh, the role could be, you could be behind the role. Um, and very important, um, what she said also, the listeners are not your enemies. If they don't listen the whole area, they could have good reasons, but it doesn't automatically mean that you uh, were not good. Uh, they, are, they are not trying to find um, your mistakes, or they are not criticizing you. Just try to think that uh, conductors, um, agents, um, intendants um, are human beings. They have pos probably their families. They're, they're nice people, hopefully. <laughs> but, but if you can picture that inside of you, you, would just, you could be more relaxed. Don't trust every rumor what you heard about uh, certain opera uh, uh, conductors or, or the intendants. You have to m make your own judges. Um, uh, when you're singing, try to be balanced with your, with your thoughts, with your brains, with your heart, and with your genitals. I mean, breathe properly, properly, breathe well, be aware what you're doing, and bring something you, about your feelings. If these three are in a good balance, it will be perfect. It very seldom is. <laughs> but, but um, um, every little concert or singing could be an audience, uh, audition. Um, it happened to me, I was singing in Firenze, uh, um, I was even, it wasn't even a recital, it, it was, I was giving music for ballet company, um, piano and voice. And um, Zubi Mehta, who was the head of Firenze Maggio Musicale at that time, came to the concert, to the performance. And I worked years and years with him afterwards. He was pleased with what, what he heard. So don't be, um, how to say that in English, don't, don't try to um, um, choose the, the things that like, um, I'm not going to sing there because it's too small for me, or they don't pay well, or it's not what I'm thinking, it's not a solo part, it's only a short sentence. Everything counts. And it's, it's a question of music in any way. Um, also when you When you're singing and you're waiting for feedback for some, somebody saying and analyzing your, um, your performance, if you take um, tr as a true word in positive words, you have to take that as well in negative. So try to find a middle way Somebody say positive in the, from the same area, from same thing. 
It's a question of a taste, the culture. You try to find the middle way and you try to be pleased the way you did it. How I did it, it was the best I could this time and that was my style. Of course, if it was totally wrong, I mean stylish things. Uh, uh, listen to your coach or your teacher or, or somebody who is very good or your good colleague. Um, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't get the job, it doesn't automatically also mean that you are just a bad singer and nobody can can take you. Uh, it, it, you we we can't know what demands the listeners have and what needs they have, and. It could also be that the agents you are listening to you tomorrow and you didn't get the job, they remember you. And then you come second time and they remember the further audition and they are pleased, they, they can see the progress or they say, now it's suitable, now is your time. So don't be depressed even if you didn't get the job. And don't be depressed if you get the job, like she said, if you didn't want to go to the certain cities. <laughs> um, and I didn't say that in the beginning, but it was in my paper, in the first page, what she said, and I want to repeat, less is more. Uh, funny enough, with the cameras, less is more, but also in a big hall, in a huge opera hall, um, less is more. If you, if you are on stage and you try to, you turn back to the audience and you try to scratch your nose or bore your nose or whatsoever, they see that. So try to be as natural as you can and, and, uh, and, and, uh, rehearse that beforehand, what you do, what gestures you do. It could be small, it could be big, uh, but just one gesture is enough in one area. Maybe one, diff maybe, maybe one is enough, or at least three or, or four, but not all the time. Like it, they, they see your nervousity and you trying to be dramatic and you doing things with your hands. It doesn't say it doesn't say anything. It doesn't communicate. The music is the most important thing. And at the end, to get the job is not the end. It's just like a marriage. It's just the beginning to work. It's just the, the door to do the work, to do the job. That's all. Thank you. Okay, so we still have a bit of time for questions. <laughs> Is there someone who would like to ask questions here in the audience, as well as in Copenhagen? Uh, can we get the sound from Copenhagen a bit, please? Yes? Yes, yes, we are hearing you perfectly, yes. We can. We had a very concentrated audience here in Copenhagen. Yes. Actually, possibly no mobile phones in anyone's hands here during the whole presentation. But I'm not sure, I don't think we have any questions from the media right now. It looks like it was maybe someone from Uno or someone in the hall there. Okay. Any questions here in the hall? <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, okay, good. Um, I would like to ask you, when you had to build your career, did you have any agents or you did everything on your own, like finding auditions or did someone did that for you? Because I think it's like the biggest job to find someone who will do this for you. Or, uh, I don't know, yeah, that's the question. Um, I certainly, uh, are, they, are, are the mics 
functioning? Yeah, there it is. Um, for my sake, I I got an uh, I got an agency or several agencies. Like I had two or three agencies in the beginning of my career, um, and I was happy to have that because in the beginning, to what I what I am, am I supposed to get? Uh, what is the fee and so on, it was impossible. Um, and nowadays, it's almost impossible to get an audition in an opera house without having an ad agency. So I, I would really recommend that. And then you can also, you can use all your effort on about singing and preparation about that and not about um, Dealing about the, the the contracts and yeah and fees and hotels and flights and things like that, so uh, it, it's it's rather important and I think it has become even more important. Mm -hmm. It's it's important to have an agency. I think it's difficult without. And uh, my advice is, I had a small Finnish agency. The smaller the better. If it's a big one, you are just a. a, a little fish in a big pool but if you're in a small agency there's big fish in a little pool <laughs> so but agencies are uh, you have to have an agent yeah mm -mm. you don't have you don't have any agencies here in Lithuania well there's a market for somebody <laughs> yeah. ah. yes definitely so, I th we have a thank you from uh, Oulu. Thanks, Anna and Soila, for sharing your insights. And I guess there, there are no questions there, so we will not be connecting through the multipoint yet, just in the afternoon. And I think we can have another break and go to lunch then. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. And we will return in this afternoon at 3 Vilnius time when we will do the mock audition. <laughs> Until later. Cheers. Two Danish time, yes. And